Chris here back taking another look at a Thunder Robot laptop. This gaming laptop of theirs is called the Zero. It has an RTX 3070. It has two PCI 4.0 slots in it. One's occupied with a 512 gigabyte SSD. 16 gigabytes of RAM that this particular model has that I bought from them. So no, it's not a free review unit or anything like that. She bought this to review here in the channel, take a bit of a risk. 16 inch screen, which is actually a very good screen in it. It's 165 hertz of refresh rate and the resolution is 2560 by 1600. Also has DC dimming with it, so you won't see any flicker coming through from the screen at all. Backlit RGB keyboard, it has Thunderbolt 4, but for the price it sells for, is it a worthwhile laptop to consider here? The Zero from Thunder Robot. So what do we get with the laptop? There is a little bit of paperwork. It's unfortunately all in Chinese, even though it does say a few things in English. We have a power supply. This is from Chikoni. This is a known brand. I see them all the time with gaming laptops. It's 230 watts, this one. And then our power supply cable. So gaming laptops are not known for being lightweight laptops. And this one, it definitely shows that it is a bit heavy, 16 inches and it does weigh 2.56 kilos there. Now adding the power supply and the power cable, the total travel weight is then 3.46 kilos. So there is no mistaking that this is a gaming laptop. We've got their glowing logo right here. So that's the Thunder Robot guy. Zero branding on the side here. This has a texture to it. And this plastic here, it's not painted, but the actual plastic is this orangey kind of color to it. Now pressing down on it, there's a bit of flex here. And the outer plastic, this orange colored one and the one on the bottom feels a little bit on the cheap side. It doesn't feel as premium as other gaming laptops that I've covered uh, here in the channel. So opening up that lid, now you can actually do that one-handed and you can see our keyboard. So I like the look of things in here. This looks a lot more premium now. And it's a very nice keyboard, this one to type on. Good loud, good spacing. We've got the number pad there. Shortcuts, arrow keys, however, are half size. Okay, so they're a little bit smaller. They've made a bit of a compromise there. And it doesn't make a lot of noise. It's not a loud keyboard. Now it is backlit. It does have different zones on it and 16 million or so colors that you can adjust with their software that you need to download off the thunderrobot.com website. For that. Now just turn off my light. You can see that the backlighting here, it looks a lot duller than it really is. It's not super bright. That's just one minor little nitpick here with it. Now this touchpad, it's okay. All right. I do find the finder movements to be fine. It seems to be relatively sensitive to those kind of things. And then the left and right mouse buttons there are hardware part of this touchpad. Now this palm rest is made out of metal. Now I've been using it for a few days and you can see already a few smudges. So nothing that a microfiber cloth can't really fix, but you'll be constantly wiping this thing down to make it look clean. This red button right here, not the power button, that's the power button. This is the fan boost button. Pressing this puts the fans into their maximum RPM, shifting a lot of air through it to give us the coolest temperatures possible. So for ports on the left, we've got a USB 3.1, and we do have audio out and microphone in, status LEDs right there, and this is an intake vent. So either side is sucking in cooler air, passing it through it, cooling it, and then it blows it all out the back. And I do actually like this. You don't end up heating up your mouse hand. On the right, two more USB 3.1 ports, and this is metal, this part right here, okay? So that's part of that palm rest wrapped around the side. That's metal, this is plastic. Now thickness measuring here, we're looking at approximately 28 millimeters. So it's not a super thin laptop. And the back of it here, so we do have some RGB for these lights around the outside. So these are the two exhaust vents. As I mentioned, I like this design. I think it's really good. So the cold air comes in through the bottom and the sides and then gets blasted the warm air out the back here. So we've got our power in, gigabit LAN, HDMI 2.0, yes, 2.0, so not 2.1. However, when I connect it up to my LG CX, that's a TV, 4K, 120 hertz, works just fine, no problem, so that's good to see. And then we have Thunderbolt, which is Thunderbolt 4.0 spec, and a mini DisplayPort 1.4 here. 
The plastic on the bottom of it is a little bit cheaper feeling, just like the lid. This is one area of minor criticism from me. I just wish they went with a different material that would feel a little more premium. So it just feels a little bit kind of cheaper there. That's the only thing. But I like this metal grill here. Getting access to the internals is not that difficult. Remove all of the screws around the outside. Don't forget this one under the seal. And there are no hidden screws under these rubber feet here, which is great. And then you need a pry tool all around the outside and you should be able to pry it off. You do need to use a little bit of force with that one. So very easy access to upgrades. We can add another PCIe 4.0 SSD in here. Now, a lot of manufacturers, this would actually be PCIe 3 spec, especially at this price point, and we wouldn't have probably the Thunderbolt 4 either. At least with my MSI laptop, I do not. Wireless card, you can remove that, replace that. It's the AX201. We have two sodium slots right here, easy to access, Samsung RAM, and it is dual rank RAM as well. So that means the chips are on both of the sides. So that should give us the maximum performance there too. And our battery, so this battery is only 64 watt hours and I'm able to get around five hours tops out of this. Of course, on the integrated graphics, not the RTX 3070. Doing so with that, then, well, you're only gonna get about two hours tops. And if you're gaming, even a little bit under that. So the two coolers, reasonably beefy coolers right here, and four copper thermal, thermal transfer heat pipes. So there is no vapor chamber, there's no liquid metal, anything like that. It's a traditional setup. So the air is sucked in from here and through the sides and then vented out the back here. So it wouldn't be too hard to repaste it if you wanted to do so. There are a lot of screws to remove. So build quality here, it's reasonable, it's good, everything's screwed in, talked up well, the layout seems to be fine, and I do like the ease of upgradability and maintenance. And taking a look at our screen, so this one, 165 hertz with a five millisecond response time. The resolution is QHD, so this one is 2560 by 1600. It's actually just over QHD, so it's QHD plus. It's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Now, they claim their brightness is 500 nits, it's actually 518 that I'm measuring with whites, of course, right in the middle. So overall, a very good panel, nice and sharp, great for games. I do like the fact we've got slim bezels left and right, top bezels not bad at all, but what about the color coverage here with this? It's actually very, very good for a gaming laptop, that is. So sRGB of 94%, NTSC here is 70%, Adobe RGB, 74% for a gaming laptop, that's very good. So this Zero laptop does ship with Windows 10 Pro. Now, when I bought this off AliExpress from their store, Thunder Robot, they did ask me what language I want. So you can select and just let them know if you want Spanish, you want French, whatever, they will install that uh, for you. So it comes with a clean install already done. Well, I had to go through the typical setup, uh, but they don't have all the extra drivers and things that you can find on their website installed. You actually need to go and download all of those if you want the customization for the control mode, controlling the fan. You can tweak a few things, the RGB keyboard and the, the Hemic sound and all of that. Okay, you need to download that from Thunder. Uh, robot.com. So the internal storage, that PCIe 4.0, SSD in there, very, very good. Okay, so those read speeds, wow, really fast. We're moving up now, of course, from PCI 3 spec, which AMD is sadly still stuck on with the Ryzen 5000 series, but that should change with the Ryzen 6000 series mobile chips when it comes out. Write speeds aren't that much faster than what we can achieve out of PCI 3 spec, but still you could upgrade and there's a spare slot in there as I showed you. You can put another PCIe 4.0 in there. You could buy yourself, for example, a Samsung 980 Pro and get blazing fast speeds out of that. So in the device manager, you will see that our chipset, the Core i7-11800H, it is listed 16 times in here because it has 16 threads, eight cores, and it's a very potent chip. As you'll see soon with the benchmarks that I'm about to show you. But before I do that, a wireless card. This is the AX201. Very good card. So I'm able to achieve my pretty much standard that I get here with my router of 1.2 to 1.3 gigabit transfers. Faster than the Realtek gigabit LAN we do have on board with this laptop. So it is a shame they did not give us 
the 2.5 gig Intel one get a bit gigabit, which would have been a lot quicker, of course. So you can install what is called their control center off thunderrobot.com under drivers for this particular laptop, the Zero. And this gives us three different performance modes. So office, gaming, and high performance. You can see stats there of the GPU, the load, the temperatures, RAM and the disk, and then fan RPMs right here. Over on the other tab, we can control then our RGB keyboard. You can set up the four different zones there. Well, it's actually, yeah, five, sorry. Five different zones because you can actually include the lid too. You can change the color of that logo that is on the back. So that's very handy for those that want to adjust all of that. And you've also got where the exit vent is, the exhaust fan around that, you can adjust that too. So all of your RGB lights all interchangeable you can go through various different patterns waves whatever let's get onto a few benchmarks here so cinebench r32 almost 11,000 points is a good score however for the 11 800h i have actually seen a little bit better i've seen scores of around 12 even almost 13 13,000 points stock now we could squeeze more out of this but for some reason thunder robot do not let us undervolt Okay, so if you try throttle stop, if you try Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, which I have right here, no undervolting and no overclocking either. It will not allow us to change the multipliers, which you can with this chipset, but they don't allow it. The BIOS as well is completely pretty much locked down. There's no advanced settings. There's no RAM timings. There is no changing as well, the multipliers there or undervolting. So that is a slight disappointment. So I do have some benchmarks here to go through. Superposition, 20,000 points for the RTX 3070. This is the 1080p medium setting. Not bad at all. It shows us that it is quite a powerful GPU for a laptop, for a mobile GPU here. Very, very good with that. And we've got some other scores here as well. So. Geekbench 5, very good single core score, getting over 1,500 and almost 9,000 single core score for Geekbench 5 with this chipset. Not the highest I've seen, but still a very respectable score there. That's great. Over 12 RTX 3070 performance more with the graphics. Okay, so 3D Mark Times by almost 10,000 points. Should be around about 11, but this is kind of an average score here for this particular chipset. So it's not bad. Again, it is a powerful GPU, as you'll see later on with a bit of gaming. Fire Strike, great score here too. Okay, Fire Strike Ultra, another good score, but still not the best I've seen for an RTX 3070 laptop. My MSI GP66 can do better there with that. So now thermals, after stressing it out, pushing it really hard, what are we seeing? So maximum temperatures, 92 degrees C. That's actually not too bad. My MSI will hit 98. So it gets very hot, especially under full load, stressing it out. Cinebench R32 is where it is going to get up to these temperatures. So normal gaming, the CPU will not hit 92 degrees. And we'll just scroll right down here. We'll take a look at our GPU. So the GPU, hang on, that's just a little bit up here. GPU temperatures, almost 80 degrees, 78. That's kind of normal there. The hotspot temperature, 86. Again, normal. So that's fine. Now this is 140 watt CPU. And you can see, sorry, GPU. And you can see it's pulling, well, just actually under that. But if I go into our NVIDIA settings here, just to show you, you go into the system information, you'll see it's 140 watts. And I can also confirm there, see, 140 watts. And it does also support our resizable bar, DLSS, of course, all of that is supported with the RTX 3070. Video editing. So this is Adobe Premiere Pro that I use. And I found the performance, especially when you've got an RTX 3070 to be excellent. This is so much better than mini PCs. So with the playback resolution, you can run that at full. Now this is 4K 100 megabit per second files. And Amazing. I don't see okay. any Very drop good frames, quality. lag, slowdown. No, with my basic kind of edits and even my long reviews, not a problem. It is running really, really well. 
So what I'll do now is test out the export time, which should be very quick considering Adobe Premiere Pro here is going to use both the CUDA cores and then also the Intel QuickSync to aid in the hardware acceleration of just encoding this video. So the preset I'm gonna use is the YouTube 4K. It's the one I always do. And one minute of footage, I'll time and tell you just how long it's gonna take here, but it should be very quick with this hardware. One of the fastest times here because that RTX 3070 with the QuickSync, I mean, look at that. That's about to finish up. So there we go. That was, I would say, probably about 25 seconds. That is super fast for one minute 4K video encoding. Okay, so finally on to some gaming. Now, we've seen from 3D Mark scores that, yes, it's got a potent GPU, but this game here, very demanding, Cyberpunk 2077. And I have it set on the medium preset for both quick preset and for quality. And for video, I'm running at the native screen resolution here. So that is 2560 by 1600. Let's take a look and see if this is going to be playable or not, or at least have a decent frame rate. So the fans are ridiculously loud at the moment. They are, well, very, very high, the RPM, and it's making a lot of noise, stressing it out running here at uh, 1600p. But the frame rate, we're getting around and close to 60 frames per second. So. A demanding game like this, being able to play at the native screen resolution with this kind of frame rate is really good. It just goes to show you that the RTX 3070, even though it's the mobile chip, still does, well that's some shocking driving there, still does have plenty of power. And of course, the Core i7-11800 is helping out a lot with that. So playable frame rate throughout, you're not going to have any problems with the most demanding games on this system. And now Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So this one is on the highest setting preset, 1080p. I'm going to run the in-game benchmark so we can have a look at the kind of performance you can expect. And here is our result. So an average of 101 frames per second from this model. Now on to an easy game for this particular hardware, and that is Counter-Strike on the absolute top maximum settings here. You can see that it's getting a very good frame rate, so this will definitely surpass that 165 hertz refresh rate, which is what we want. Occasionally you get a few dips, which which is going to drop down below 165. I think most people should be happy with this. Now the screen does have a 5 millisecond response time, apparently, according to them. Okay, and why did I not get that kill at all? Uh, good timing with that smoke, smoke grenade, though. And very playable, very smooth. As you expect for a Core i7 11th Gen and an RTX 3070, this is running so well. Really good on this hardware. Of course, a very easy title. That was an excellent shot. I did not even see that coming. Wow, I guess you heard me. And finally, The Witcher 3. This one is still very demanding, and you can see we're getting around 100 frames per second. Now, I have it set to the highest possible visual, so it's on the ultra setting. Looks great, even for an old game, still very, very good. And a very smooth, steady frame rate here, which looks great. Moving on now to the webcam, so this one's just 720p. The quality, as you can tell already from this video, is not great. It's a little blurry, there's a lot of noise to it, and it's a shame it's not a 1080p camera. Now the audio out of the dual array microphones, which are either side of that webcam, it's not actually too bad. I think the audio quality is fine and people will be able to hear you. So at least we do have a camera on board here, it's just not amazing quality. What about the audio performance out of this gaming laptop here? So not amazing at all. So the 3.5 millimeter phone jack that is on the left here does support microphones, as I mentioned before. It sounds fine to my ears, but the speakers, they're really not loud enough. They lack bass. They're your typical kind of laptop speakers. Really quite disappointing. So I'll give you a sample of them now. Another area of complaint from me with this particular laptop is the fan noise. So the two fans either side, they seem to be constantly on, even with light things like Chrome, always on. Now the thermals are good. It runs cooler than my MSI GP66 with the same exact CPU. However, the trade-off is the fan noise. 
Now here is the fan boost mode, which I will put on now and give you a sample that when it's on, yes, you get really good temperatures, lowers down those temps by about 20 degrees or so. However, it's super loud. It's like an afterburner on a jet. It's so loud and you hear from the sample. Now, what about the battery life? Because we've got a 65 watt hour battery, it's not going to be amazing, but it's not as bad as some of the gaming laptops I've checked out, including the other model that I've also reviewed in the channel, which has a much smaller capacity battery. I can achieve around six, five and a half to six hours, possibly even six and a half with light use. And that's just like YouTube streaming or watching Netflix through Chrome, you'll be able to achieve those kind of results with the battery life. So if you then decided to do a bit of gaming, well, then you're looking approximately two hours to about an hour and 45 minutes on the RTX 3070. So to achieve that good battery life, of course, you have to be on the integrated graphics. Now this model here, there's a lot of things I do like about it. I like the screen, over 500 nits of brightness, 165 hertz refresh rate. It has a five millisecond response time. That's, of course, grays we're talking about there. And overall, it's a decent panel. The Sharp QHD Plus resolution, well, QHD is very good that it's got that. And of course, we've got the RTX 3070, which can drive that and the games if you've seen. So demanding titles like Cyberpunk 2077, very playable. Then you've got other games like The Witcher 3 that I tested out, Far Cry 5, Far Cry 6 when that comes out. So all of those modern titles will be playable with this spec of system. And the other things that I do like, well, the second PCI slot, that's PCI 4. Normally on other laptops, like my MSI GP66, it's only a PCI 3 spec, okay? So we gain an additional drive there for that super fast storage. Thunderbolt 4 at this price point is good. And we do have with this model a local EU warranty, which is another positive there. So for one year, one year warranty, you can get it sent back to Germany where the service center is if you need any repairs. For example, you've got a problem with the screen or whatever, they'll replace it and send it back to you. That's a good thing to have there, of course, with it. So the cons, it's a little loud, a little too loud, actually. So here on the battery right now, it's not bad, but the fan is constantly on. There's also no undervolting support with this. We cannot tweak the RAM timings, which we're able to do with, say, MSI laptops. One of the things I really love about their laptops, can't do it with this one here, so they've blocked that out. Even trying to use throttle stop, no undervolting, no overclocking either. We would be able to squeeze a lot more out of this particular processor. So while the cooling is very good, it only gets to around about 92 degrees. On my MSI, it gets up to 98. It's a little bit cooler than other laptops with the same spec. However, there's the fan noise. When gaming, very, very loud. And when you put it onto the fan boost mode, which I'll demonstrate now again, it's like a jet engine, it's takeoff. Very loud that. Of course, you wouldn't always use that. You'd just put that on when you're doing something demanding. For example, you're encoding a video and you want that constant best top performance there, maximum performance the whole time when you're doing that, then you can turn it on. It's just an option. You don't have to use it, of course. The other thing with this one is the build of it. Okay, so the lid, plastics, and then the underside plastic make it feel a little cheap. However, at least when you open it up, we do have a metal palm rest. The keyboard to type on is very good, although the back lighting on this keyboard isn't the brightest that I have seen before. And then the bezels around it are matte colored as well. So pretty much that is the full story there of the Thunder Robot Zero, thank you so much for watching this video.